Over the years, many people have owned Villa Leopolda, and they have built, restyled and decorated it to their liking. While the interior of the house has not been seen by many people, it is known to contain antique artworks that are rare in the world. Welcome to Planet Lux, and in this video we'll take a look inside the world's third most expensive palace. Villa Leopolda is the world's third largest home, located on the beautiful lagoons of the French Riviera in France. It is spread out over eight acres of land and has the best sea views imaginable. The house has always been an important part of European history because it combines royal history with a modern touch of masterful architecture and interior design. The villa has housed many elites over the years, from kings to businessmen. It has a luxurious feel because it is the most expensive home in Europe. Let's take a look at what makes Villa Leopolda so stunning. The history begins with royalty, as the home was built for Belgian King Leopold II, who purchased the property for one franc in 1902. The house was bought for his mistress, Blanche Celia Josephine de la Croix, to whom he paid frequent visits. Blanche was evicted from the property after Leopold died, and the property was taken over by the king's nephew, King Albert I. During the First World War, the property was used as a hospital to treat the injured and sick. Giovanni Agnelli, the owner of the Italian automakers Fiat and Ferrari, bought the house in 1950. La Leopolda became one of the properties owned by Lebanese-born Brazilian banker Edmond Safra and his wife Lily in 1987. The Safras hired interior designer Renzo Monjardino, and Micah Ertegun decorated the second-floor bedrooms. The Safras hosted large parties at the villa, and female guests were given an enameled box with a portrait of the Villa Leopolda at a 1988 party. Safras' guest list was so large that there was a Saturday party and a Monday party. Tulips were flown in from Holland, the food was prepared by famed chef Roger Verge of the Moulin de Mougin, and the music was provided by two of Safra's favorite musicians. Brazilian band leader Sergio Mendes, who had flown in from California with his entire orchestra, and pianist David Wood, who had flown in from the UK with his quartet. Author John Fairchild described the party as the ultimate in conspicuous consumption. In his 2014 memoir, Red Notice, banker Bill Browder recounted visiting Safra at the Villa Leopolda with Benny Steinmetz. Lily was looking for a buyer after Safra's tragic death. Ignis Mewison, a luxury real estate entrepreneur, wanted to buy the property and tried several times to persuade Lily. Lily gave in after he offered her $555 million. However, due to the 2008 economic downturn, Mewison was unable to pay more than his $58 million deposit. A battle ensued when he withdrew the deposit, but the French court ordered him to pay the amount. Mikhail Prokhorov, a Russian billionaire businessman, tried several times through Ignis Mewison to buy the Villa Leopolda from Safra before accepting his offer of $750 million plus $40 million for the villa's furniture in the summer of 2008. Initial reports on the sale of the villa in July 2008 incorrectly identified fellow Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich as the buyer. Prokhorov would later deny purchasing the property, claiming that he had refused to do business in France following his arrest by French police in 2007 for allegedly providing prostitutes to guests at Courchevel, a ski resort in the French Alps. In the prostitution case, no charges were ever filed against Prokhorov. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic? Following the 2008 financial crisis, Prokhorov attempted to withdraw from the sale, resulting in a lawsuit between Prokhorov and Safra over the $80 million deposit he had paid on the villa. In November 2012, a French court ruled against Prokhorov, prompting Safra to announce that she would donate his deposit to various global charities. Ogden Codman was the architect who imagined and built the majestic property between 1929 and 1931. He created the landscape for the villa in a Neo-Palladian style by purchasing existing structures. The architect's first paintings and artworks are kept in the New England Antiquities in Boston, Massachusetts. After purchasing the property, the Safras commissioned Lorenzo Mongiardino, known for his art decorations on movie sets, to create the interior design. The couple also commissioned acclaimed designer Michael Ertegun to decorate the villa's second-floor bedrooms. 
The home, which is only a few miles from the Mediterranean Sea, features artwork inspired by the beauty of France. The interior also includes a bowling alley and several dining rooms. Along with the movie theater, the home has antique artworks and valuable marble structures that add a touch of austerity to the luxurious villa. The home's vintage aura has made it an important part of European history. This sprawling 50-acre property offers spectacular sea views from its terrace, which overlooks the French Riviera. It also provides a glimpse of the 1200 trees of various varieties that surround the property. The home has 50 full-time workers who work hard to keep the vegetation fresh and well-maintained. There is also a greenhouse for guests to relax in, as well as numerous gardens and courtyards. The home's aerial view shows the magnificent blue pool with a lounging area for relaxation. The well-kept hedges and well-sculpted statues give the impression of true luxury. According to reports, the house also has additional pools on the inside. There's also a fountain, a sports court, a helipad, and exterior staircases for easy access from one location to another. The estate is made up of two guest houses, exterior staircases, sport courts, and an enormous swimming pool that requires the daily work of more than 50 gardeners. The residence has 19 bedrooms, each with its own elaborate and expensive private bath and outdoor terrace. The house has a bowling alley, several dining rooms, several kitchens, and a private movie theater. The mansion is over 80,000 square feet of excessive luxury. There is a lot to say about Villa Leopolda, and a lot of it is fun. Some of it is true, some of it is fiction, and not all of it is confirmed. We know that the house was built without the knowledge of the setting queen's wife or her lover. It was then taken over by family after his death, set abandoned for many years, and no one knows who the current owner is. Lily Safra is thought to still own the home, though there are reports that she quietly sold it to a number of owners, including Bill Gates. He has never confirmed this, but he has been frequently visiting the estate and staying within its many elaborate walls. Because of its influence on Europe and pop culture, the private residency has been designated as a French monument. The lead character in the 1984 classic film Red Shoes climbs the stairs of the gorgeous villa, thinking she has been invited to dinner, but is instead cast as a ballet dancer. Alfred Hitchcock used Leopolda as a backdrop and set for his film To Catch a Thief, starring Cary Grant and Grace Kelly. The plot revolves around a retired cat burglar who intends to apprehend a jewel thief. Along with movies, Leopolda was mentioned in the memoir Red Notice by banker Bill Browder, who detailed his visit to the villa. The most expensive private residence in Europe, Villa Leopolda, lives up to its name with stunning views of the Blue Lagoons and a breathtaking interior that offers every amenity imaginable. The residence represents the pinnacle of European luxury and has become an iconic structure. The French Historic Properties has also dedicated a website to Villa Leopolda due to its popularity. Finally, it's not widely known that this house is a historical landmark. It was registered in France for an intriguing reason. The house is designed in the Belle Epoque style, which was popular from 1871 to 1914, and it has been designated as a historical monument in France. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Would you like to visit the Villa Leopolda? Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.